Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Lord's house on this Sunday morning. It's good to see all you folks here today. And uh, I know there was a lot of concern in a lot of quarters about the snow, but see, God was good and broke it up into two different sections, and they're easily handling the first one, and frankly, I don't even know if the second one's going to come, but you know how we tend to panic at things. There are a number of announcements that are in your bulletin, and there's a, a couple that I'd like to highlight. Number one, session will meet upstairs Thursday, December 15th at 4.30 p.m., and the deacons, including the newly elected, are also expected to attend. This is a joint meeting with the session and the deacons. The deacons will then be excused to leave, and if you want to have your own organizational meeting afterwards, which I recommend, that's fine. Otherwise, I guess you can go home and the session will continue to meet. We need readers for next week's Advent reading and Christmas Eve. Okay. I am going to send around a. Sorry, what did I do? <laughs> the I think it's back on the table. Uh, sign up sheet. If you're going to be here for Christmas Eve and would consent to be a reader or a helper in some way, I'd like to know so that I can get the material to you. It will be it's, scripture is all familiar, but I just need to know who's going to be here that can put this do this all. So. It's going to be kind of like a service of lessons and carols, but not the same. But there will be scriptures read, a couple verses. Nobody's going to have really long passages. So if you could do that and help us with that and make it uh, an involved thing, it would be much appreciated. The deacons are selling poinsettias. Contact Doris Harris or Pauline Metzger to purchase one. And uh, they will be those who you purchase in memory of will be listed on the Christmas Eve bulletin. The, um, Musk, the uh, Morning Sun Care Center is apparently having an open house today at 2 o'clock. Everyone's invited. Bob will be playing. Bob Nolan. And uh, so I hope that you all are able to make it there. Are there any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Well, seeing none, then let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we sing the prelude, the first Noel.
In Advent, we remember the coming of Jesus and our hope for his second coming. A reading from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the for fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O God, like the streams in Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap the shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bring his sheaves with him. We light this candle because, like God's people centuries ago, we know that God has come in Christ and that Christ will come again. We rejoice in God's work in history and in the future. The pink color means joy. Dear God, as we light this candle, we rejoice. We know how the first act of the story ended with the birth of Jesus the Messiah. And we know that he will come again in glory. So even though the story isn't over, we rejoice in our hope. We wait for you rejoicing. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. In this season of lights, we turn our eyes toward the light of the world. In this season of song, we sing carols of the child born in Bethlehem. In this season of giving, we thank God for the greatest gift of all. In this season of wonder, we worship Christ the living King. Praise the Lord. Our first hymn will be number 73, While We Are Waiting, Come. Please be seated. Today's responsive reading is going to be a little bit different. Instead of from the green book there, we are going to actually turn to a hymn. And that's number 101 in your hymnals. So many of these hymns have great words and we spend so much time looking at the music that we really don't catch what they say. That even goes for familiar hymns where we go into automatic pilot and we don't really think about what we're singing. So as we read this, the text of this hymn today, I would pray that you would reflect upon the words as they are spoken. I'll give the first two lines of each verse and then you read responsively the last two lines. Joy has dawned upon the world, promised from creation. God's salvation now unfurled, hope for every nation. Not with fanfare from above, not with scenes of glory, 
but now we give a hell of a gift of love. Jesus, come on there, Sounds of wonder fill the sky with the songs of angels as the mighty Prince of Life shelters in a stable. Hands that set each star in place shape the earth in darkness. Cling now to a mother's breast, vulnerable and helpless. Shepherds bow before the Lamb, gazing at the glory. Gifts of men from distant lands prophesy the story. Gold, a king is born today. Incense, God is with us. Myrrh, his death will make a way, and by his blood he'll win us. Son of Adam, son of man, given as a ransom, reconciling God and man, Christ our mighty champion. What a savior, what a friend, what a glorious mystery. Once a death of man, now the Lord. Sometimes the most difficult thing in our lives is knowing what we ourselves, in what ways we are not perfect. And sometimes that is the thing that makes us realize that other people need a little compassion in their lives as well. Please join me in the call to confession, or in the prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, as we sing our Christmas time praise, our own words condemn us. We are thanking you for sending Jesus to show us how life ought to be lived. But we have not often really tried to live like him. Forgive us, Father. We are thanking you for making it clear to us in Jesus that there is no limit to your love for us. But we are always setting limits on our love for you and for one another. Forgive us, Father. We are thanking you for keeping your promises made to Abraham and the people of long ago. But there are many times when we do not keep our promises. Sometimes we cannot because we promise too much. Sometimes we could but be because it is too much trouble. Forgive us, Father. Have mercy on us, dear Lord. The truth of this saying, that Christ, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. May we recognize our need, celebrate our salvation, and share the good news of the gospel. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first reading today is Matthew 11, verses 2 through 11. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, 
and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what you, did you go to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about, <coughs> excuse me, about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Our second reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. <coughs> the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. Then he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shall shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs in the haunts where jackals once lay. Grass and reeds and papyrus will grow and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in the way. Wicked fools will not go on about it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransom of the Lord will return. This is the word of the God, word of the Lord. As we look at our passage in Matthew today, John the baptizer is in a dark place. You might remember his message, one that said he was a voice crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, who spoke of the Lord's coming with fire and the Holy Spirit, the one whose would be like the threshing floor and the chaff would be blown away and the wheat would fall to the ground. That message of repent because the day of the Lord is coming was one that resonated with many people. They wanted the Messiah to come. Not everyone appreciated it though because John was rather blunt. He was not politically correct. He was a man of God who spoke God's truth and he didn't much concern himself with the consequences. And one of those things he did that uh, was Herod Antipas, who was one of the sons of Herod the Great, had married his half-sister. And this was against all Jewish law and custom. And Herod Antipas was supposedly a Jew. And so John spoke out against it. And for his troubles, he got thrown into prison. No trial. No Miranda rights. Just hauled off and tossed in chains. 
waiting for the king's pleasure, which apparently was going to be, after his daughter got him drunk, to cut off John's head. It's interesting that while he's in prison, John sends his disciples to ask what he asks of Jesus. Is it despair? He seems to have forgotten who Jesus is. And I've always wondered about that issue. I mean, his Jesus' mother Mary knew who Jesus was, yet seems to have forgotten when in Mark she leads the family in asking Jesus to come home after his ministry starts. John the baptizer said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he saw the Spirit descend on Jesus as a dove. Yet now he asks, Is he the one? Peter later on rightly names Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, and then immediately seems to forget it as he tries to tell Jesus what he can and cannot do. And Jesus has to rebuke him. Get thee behind me, Satan. The Spirit seems to have given glimpses of a reality and then veiled it again. Perhaps because it wasn't time yet, or maybe because their own preconceptions and expectations blinded them to the truth. I wonder how often we are blinded to God's action, either because of our own preconceptions or because it isn't the right time for something to be revealed. Now John sends his disciples to ask Jesus this question. Are you the one? And perhaps it was to seek comfort. You know, sometimes, no matter how strong our faith, we get tired. We get discouraged. We get into a dark place where we ask ourselves, Is this the way? Is God really there? Is Jesus the one? We can relate to John, I think, despite not having been thrown in prison and wondering whether you will live or die. Jesus' response comes directly from the passage in Isaiah read today. It is one that was spoken of in terms of judgment. In Isaiah 34, it talks about the judgment against the nations. Isaiah 35 then goes on to talk about how Israel, in that time of judgment, will be redeemed. And it says, your recompense from the Lord will come. It bears some relationship and is similar to Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2, which Jesus read in Nazareth from the scroll, said, today this has been fulfilled in your hearing, and then nearly got himself thrown off the cliff for his troubles. Because the people weren't ready to hear the fullness of the message. The recompense would come. Jesus came to heal to forgive. Now he did preach about the judgment to come. He preached to repent for the kingdom of God. The rule of God was here, is at hand. He preached on hell a number of times. And what would happen to those who did not follow him. But his actions were one of healing and compassion, extended not only to the Jews, but to everyone. Lepers, who were declared unclean, had to go around with a sign around their neck, ringing a bell, so that everybody would know and scatter and get out of the way and not touch them. Even Samaritans and Gentiles were healed. High officials, Jairus's daughter, in the Jewish authority. Assume, presumably, he was a friend. It said that he had spent a lot of money building, helping build the temple, the synagogue. Presumably, he was well known to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees. 
He was very desperate when he asked Jesus for help. And Jesus helped him. All of these things testified to something more than simply a prophet. All of these things testified to something even more than a Messiah. You see, Jesus was not only saying, but showing that he did not fit into the box that the others of that time were trying to put him into. The things that he spoke of doing, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. These were things that God did. Not by your own power, not even the prophets. These were things that God did. And so Jesus was declaring that he was God. And in that message to John, I believe he was saying, take comfort, no joy. The time has come, even if you don't understand it all. And really, isn't that what faith is about? Ultimately, faith comes down to a matter of trust. We trust in God when we may not understand all the aspects of it. We choose to continue to follow Jesus. We choose to love our Lord. We choose and can choose joy, believing that it will come, as they say in the scriptures, in the morning, after the dark night. Jesus gives this personal message to John, finishing by saying, blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. He's encouraging John, hold on. Hold fast to what you know is true. You have had a glimpse of reality. You know the truth. Just be faithful. Then Jesus speaks to the crowd. And he challenges them. In their faith, in their walk, what did you go out into the desert to see? Meaning when they went to hear John. A reed swayed by the wind. Somebody who was saying what people like to hear, who was going along with the politically correct way. Well, if not, what did you go out to see? Somebody who was slick. That's a man dressed in fine clothes. Somebody who was professional. Somebody who was a great salesman. You know, sometimes I think some of these televangelists ought to be in car sales. No offense, Kevin. Not so. <laughs> then what did you go out to see? A prophet? We must remember that John, while he was a prophet, never did any miracles, unlike the prophets of the Old Testament. Jesus then affirms John, saying, Yes, I tell you, he was a prophet and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it was written, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. That comes from Malachi. He gives John a place of honor. And then he says something curious. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the baptizer, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So whoever it is that follows Jesus, whoever it is that has the kingdom of heaven, the rule of God in their heart, whoever it is that follows the way, the truth, and the life, he will be greater even than John the baptizer. That person's witness 
will be truer. That person's example will be greater. That person's faithfulness will be more renowned. It's quite a tall order. Quite a promise. And yet, it has occurred. Those who believed in Jesus after his resurrection that formed the church did many miracles and many great things, but the greatest thing that they did was they never shut up. Now, I know we like to tell our spouses sometimes to shut up or our children to shut up, but they never stopped preaching the gospel. They never stopped talking about Jesus. They were beaten. They were chastised. Some of them were killed and martyred, but they never, even at the point of death, stopped witnessing to Christ. There's a reason why from a core of 12 men and a number of other men and women, but 12 particularly close disciples, the church, the Christian church, exploded into being and is the largest church today. And did you know that that faithful witness occurs even now? There are people who have, are currently choosing to die rather than renounce Christ. Now you may say, Pastor, we're supposed to be talking about joy today. This is the Christmas season. Why are we talking about martyrs? Because the only reason that they are able to martyr themselves or be martyred, the only reason that they are able to stay faithful and witness to Christ even at that point of death is because of the joy that they know is before them. When they come to see Christ face to face, and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, not everyone, I would venture to say, most of us will ever be called upon to make that radical a witness. But we are called to be that faithful. And when, as with John, we get into those dark places, when, as with John, we sometimes feel despair and discouragement, and this season, this Advent Christmas season, is well known for being one of the most stressful every year, then we too must choose joy. To hold on to the joy that is before us, keeping our eyes fixed on Christ, that we too may experience the healing that Christ can bring. The blind may see, the deaf may hear, the lame may walk again, but most importantly, the dead rise, and we who were dead are alive in Christ. And that is always a reason to celebrate. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn is number 77. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, and we're going to do verses 1, 4, 5, and 6.
Almighty God, thank you for the surprising ways that you bring salvation. You faithfully keep your covenant promises to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants. With Mary, we express deep gratitude for your help at unexpected turns in our lives. Give us each a humble heart to serve you willingly and joyfully. Use these offerings to assist people who struggle with doubt or physical needs through the ministries of our church. And as our ushers come forward to take our morning offering, meditate on the goodness and blessings of God that you give joyfully and generously unto the work of, mornings of God's church here in Morning Sun. Together, let us say the prayer of dedication. Lord, we give you today what is already yesterday yours. You provide so much for us, blessings pressed down, shaken together, running over. Thank you for giving us the ability to give and cheerful hearts to do it. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time when we have the joy and privilege of praying for and with each other, knowing we need no other intermediary than Jesus Christ. There are a number of concerns that are printed in your bulletin. We ask you to pray for those people that are listed by name, even if you don't know them. And be faithful in praying, because God answers prayer. But sometimes he calls on us to be persistent about it. Are there any other joys or concerns that are not in here that you'd like to share? Yes, Terry. Uh, first, Aaron Boyson received encouraging news at his visit to Mayo this week. Um, the trend line is in the right direction, and they do have a plan of attack for his um, answer. And secondly, another joy, uh, Monty and Becky Delzell have a new first grandchild, Willa Rose Vance. And she weighed a little over eight pounds, which is more than Monty and Becky's two girls weighed together. <laughs> okay, so they have a first grandchild. And what's the child's name again? Willa. Willa. Okay. <clears throat> I don't take dictation, see, so it takes me a little while to catch up. Are there any other joys or concerns to share at this time? Any other joys or concerns? Well, I'm sure there are others that are on people's hearts. And fortunately for us, God knows our needs better than we do ourselves, and He delights in answering the prayers of His people. So let's pray. God, our Father, Creator of the universe, giver of every breath we take. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise, for you are faithful. 
You are such an awesome God, almighty, all-knowing, all-loving, all-wise. You cannot abide sin. You cannot look upon it. But you wanted a relationship with us, one in which we loved you freely. So you made a way for us. And Jesus came and met your holiness and your justice. As he lived a perfect life, as he preached the good news, as he was fully human, fully God, and therefore worthy to sacrifice himself for us. And he went to the cross and died to cleanse us of our sins. So that when you look upon us, you don't see our sin-stained souls, but you see Christ's righteousness. Our souls washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus was raised again, even as he promised in his message to John, the dead shall be raised. And in his resurrection, we're given new hope, new life. Abundant life in him and the promise of eternal life in heaven. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you are so good to us. We give you thanks for new life with Willa, grandchild of Monty and Becky. We give you thanks for encouraging news in a fight with cancer for Aaron and pray that you will continue to keep him strong and his family strong as they work with the doctors to try and beat this foe. And Lord, we ask your healing hand to be upon one of your servants, Angie, as she recovers from neck surgery. Just pray that her recovery would be swift and full, that whatever pain she was feeling would be relieved, that she would be able once again to minister to the people in that care center whom she means so much to. And Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, we pray for their families today. In this time of joy and peace that are spoken of so often, there are still those who grieve and mourn. But the good news is, they have the hope that one day their mourning shall turn to dancing and their sorrow to joy. If only they believe. Lord, may they know that peace that passes all understanding and only comes from you. May they be strengthened in their faith as they look to you for the hope of the future and your promises. And Lord, may they give you glory even during this time of stress, saying, come Lord Jesus. And Jesus, Prince of Peace, do come soon. Bring your peace to the entire world as every knee shall bow and every tongue confess you are Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And Holy Spirit be poured out upon each one of us. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us perseverance. That we might be faithful witnesses. That even through doubt we would hold on to faith. And hope. That we might choose joy. And someday see you face to face to celebrate your wondrous goodness and grace. And Holy Spirit be poured out upon this church. Expand its boundaries and ministries. Keep it from evil. May it be a light in the darkness of this world. A lamp on a hill. Leading others to know your love and grace and mercy even as we have experienced them in Jesus Christ. For we ask all of this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Now if you would turn to 632, we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer.
And now if you would join me, stand as you're able and join me in singing our final hymn today for this worship service. Number 92, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. I read something recently that said a mistake that we pastors and those that lead worship often make is to say, and now, or now is the time. Because it sets markers up so that people think, okay, we're this far through the service and now we're going to be done. And we may be finished with this gathering of worship, but worship is something that's supposed to occur all through your life every day. As you sing praises to God and give prayers continuously to Him. The worship of God in our lives by what we do is what makes us the kind of witnesses that Christ wants to see. So yes, we're done with this gathering for this morning. And I'm glad that you all were here because we are meant to be in community. But I would pray that you would go out from here today, that you would continue your worship in your life and your witness with everyone that you meet, giving praise to God and telling the good news of the gospel. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.